This week, we'll talk about the fight against domestic violence with Joyce Shetler Holt. Joyce is the president and founder of Hagar Sisters, which seeks to end the cycle of domestic abuse with the power of God. I'm Charles Galda, president of Vision New England and your host for The Church in Action. Joyce, thanks for being with us again. Thank you, Charles. I'm so happy to be with you and to to um, bring this message to to people. Can you remind folks maybe if you, a little bit of bio and background on who you are and how you came to be at Hagar's? Sure. Um, uh, probably appropriate for me to say I grew up in the church. I'm uh, the daughter of a pastor, um, have a background in business and uh, corporate education. Um, you know, so you wouldn't think necessarily, or I certainly didn't think um, that my my path, my direction in life was going to end up in an abusive relationship, an abusive marriage, um, but it did. Um, but I didn't really know that I was being abused. It took um, eight years, two Christian counselors and um, a you know, just a lot of strife to actually figure it out. Um, so um, the way Hagar Sisters actually came into being is the point where I did come to terms with the fact that I was experiencing abuse. Um, I call them divine appointments. Um, there was... Um, there were five different scenarios where um, God put someone right in my path who was experiencing the same thing that I was. And they were all from my church, um, which was shocking because I thought I was the only one um, who was experiencing what I was. Yeah. And and so and that and coming out of that is you is what motivated you to start Hagar Sisters is is that am I putting the pieces together right? You are you are. Um, all I knew was as I heard the stories of the other women, um, it was just within a two month period that we needed to be together. We needed to pray. Uh, you know, our big question was as women of faith, what does God expect of us? in light of an abusive marriage. Um, so we did, we started getting together at my home and um, just shocking uh, because many of us had been hurt by the church at, um, that we attended, uh, but women just kept finding us and coming and coming. Um, and we went in three months, there were 16 women, then there were 36 and there were 63 women. Um, the majority were from the same church. It was a big church and yet it was shocking. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, what I learned last time when we talked about this is churches are not always equipped to deal with this, this stuff and can make it worse. Yes. Right. With, with, you know, badly applying biblical principles. Absolutely. And, right. And and so now you said something that I think somebody maybe not in this field or not experiencing this or, or feel, would say, well, how could you not know you were being abused? And so you don't say that you speak to, from your experience now, but can you kind of help people understand what's going on that somebody might not? Um, it generally helps people to think of the frog in the pot of water on the stove mm. and you turn it on because when you meet this person that you fall in love with, um, they don't start out abusing. They put their best foot forward. And, um, you know, over a period of time, uh, they usually rush commitment. But as that commitment grows, they feel more and more confident about revealing um, their controlling nature and the abusive side of them themselves. And it's, there's a lot of similarities, as I understand it, but correct me if I'm wrong, between then what happens in that progression into abuse, where it's, you're, you kind of, before you know it, the water's boiling and you didn't realize it was being heated. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the way human traffickers work, the way some cults work, is it's this progression with, with emotional things going on and sometimes very intentional um, manipulative things that you don't even realize you're being manipulated until you're so far in, you don't know what's happened. 
Correct. And, you know, even though these things are happening, um, there's a cycle of abuse. And many of the things that I mentioned today are actually on our website. Um, we emphasize education. So um, the, the cycle of abuse, um, once there's the, we call it the explosion, there often, at least in the beginning, is a honeymoon phase where there's apology and I don't know, love you so much, guilt gifts and um, all kinds of things, you know, so you think that the person that you met was the real personality, mm. but really there's another um, controlling personality waiting yeah. to come out as the commitment as you're less and less likely to leave. Um, key times are um, once you get married, often the wedding night. Mm. Uh, they talk about the switch, the light switch, um, but also 30% of all women who are abused are abused for the first time when they're pregnant. Mm. Because there, there are fewer options to leave now, right? It, or harder to leave yeah. now. Interesting. Right. And, and so the, so women, uh, and it's not, I guess we shouldn't just say women, but I know your ministry is for women. And yes. so, so women experience this progression and suddenly they're in it and they're either realize they're trapped with and can't figure a path out, or they still haven't figured out they're trapped and they don't know what's happened. They know something's happened, but they don't know what's happened to them. Um, and, and let me just go back to your statement. Um, men experience abuse also. Um, I think that it's very underreported, um, but they experience a lot of the same, uh, they have a lot of the same experiences as the women, um, but they have the additional societal pressure um, of, you know, masculinity and that you know, how can you be abused and, and things like that. So um, if a man calls us and um, is uh, his believes he may be experiencing abuse, we definitely minister to anyone who calls for the first time um, and then we'll help them with resources um, and everything. But we, we care deeply about the men who are abused as well. I'm sorry, that was just one thing. And then the rest of your question. I don't was, remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it no, was no. a great question. I, I have a short attention span to begin with. And as I get older, it's gotten shorter. <laughs> and so we'll, let's go on. Maybe yeah. we'll come back okay. to it. And, and so then the church can step into this. Um, and I, 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 I've heard stories uh, from from uh, other women and and from you where we start to misapply things like, well, you, you need to submit to your husband. And some some women yeah. will have that theology already. And we are yes. called to submit to everybody. And there's a very healthy biblical principle there. But yes. that now it gets applied in an unhealthy way. Correct. And, I, and my church pushes me back to the abuser. Correct. And and so so what is Hagar's doing? in this space to try and help with this? Well, um, when you take a group of survivors who are committed to helping other survivors, you get intensive and um, uh, desire for healing, true deep healing to occur. And as women of faith, we believe that um, God brings that level of deep healing, because this is uh, women are experiencing trauma, whether it's physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse, um, uh, neglect, or spiritual abuse. You know, there's it's it's traumatizing. Um, you know, so um, we need to be experts in domestic violence because. Um, it's so much more complex than anyone would imagine. Um, and we are trauma informed, um, but we really wanted to focus on healing. So we did a lot of research on what does true healing look like? And we developed a curriculum um, and the curriculum has evolved over time. Um, but our program has just changed significantly. Okay. Um, and um, we developed the first of its kind online sister portal. 
Um, so all of our materials, all of the videos um, are accessible on a secure website 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, so when a woman calls for the first time or emails us, she speaks with a care coordinator who listens compassionately. Um, and then um, she is able to go into a self-paced uh, program called My Care Plan, um, which does have some options for group discussion. And of course, the care coordinators are always available. But then we have additional courses that are about 10 weeks in length that we run over Zoom that complement the content um, because community, um, knowing that there are other Christian women um, who have experienced something similar, um, you know, when we originally got together, it was like, it sounds like we are all married to the same person um, because there are a lot of similarities in the patterns that happen while each situation is, is different. Yeah. And, and so um, if let's, let's talk through, cause I can think of a couple of different scenarios um, that might be helpful to someone listening to this. And so one would be, let's start with that scenario of I'm, um, uh, I'm being abused right now or uh, right, or I'm somewhere in that process from the, you know, Jekyll to Hyde kind of path. Mm -hmm. How can I, how can I know that's happening to me? What's, what are some signs? Well, I think going back to, to the foundation is probably the most important in being able to discern because most people think that abuse is about anger, um, but it's really about the person's desire to have power and control in the relationship and to maintain that. Um, and when that um, power and control is not, um, when they feel like they've lost the power and control in the relationship, that's when the abusive tactics happen. You asked specifically about what are the signs someone is experiencing abuse? Yeah, is there something I could that might trigger the thought? Say, oh my gosh, I didn't right. And especially, I think about somebody who maybe grew up in an abusive household where this may seem normal to me. Very much so. Very much so. Um, um, love shouldn't hurt. Mm. Um, you know, I remember the day that I read um, the Corinthians passage, love is patient, love is kind. And they said, put your husband's name in the passage. Um, and I'm like, he's not any of this, not a single thing. Mm. Um, as a matter of fact, he's the other extreme. Um, so, um, is it a loving, nurturing, growing relationship or is it hurtful? Um, do, are you being controlled? A lot of women describe um, feeling like they're walking on eggshells. Um, of course, there's a term called gaslighting um, where you know they bend reality um, and tell you that what reality is isn't actually what happened. Um, so, in the domestic violence world, that's um, called uh, crazy making. Okay. Um, so, you know, you might have been called crazy. You might feel like you're going crazy. Um, but starting to lose your sense of self. Um, um, one of the sisters dubbed it soul murdering. Um, you know, you you when someone is controlling so many aspects of your life. Um, you lose your sense of who you are um, and what's right and what's wrong and your ability to make that judgment. Um, women become very, uh, they can become very depressed. Um, so, you know, I'm generalizing and that makes it hard because there are always exceptions. Yeah. Um, and it also, there are exceptions because of the frog in the pot of water. You know, it's not the same when it starts as it is when it um, has gotten to its full capacity. You know, I, I know in uh, other areas like human trafficking and, and cults, we, it, it becomes a mind control process and that's a technical term. It sounds like for something very similar here 
And there's in that process, there's usually a time early on where there's a voice in you that says, something's not right here. I, I can't put any words to what's being done to me, but something's being done to me. And if you listen to that voice, you get out. If you don't, you get stuck because um, it progresses. Is something similar at work here? Is there a little, is there a trigger we should say, if you're hearing that voice? Oh, if there's a red flag, by all means, um, look at the power and control wheel um, that outlines what the different tactics are. Look at the belief system of the abusive partner. Um, he believes and it's the belief system that drives the tactics. He believes that he's central and deserving and um, superior, yeah. um, which means that you're peripheral, that you're inferior, and that you're serving. Yeah. So, you know, you have to go back to the basics um, to some extent to really um, figure out, you know, what's going on. Am I? Am I being controlled? And and there needs to be a pattern. You know, if everybody, if you look at the power and control wheel, you'll see on there um, yelling. And this is one of the things I do in workshops. I'm like, who here has not yelled? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, who, who here is an abuser? You know, um, it's, it's a pattern of intimidation uh, to gain and make you anticipate oh, I don't want that to happen. Um, so is there a voice? Um, see, I can answer from my own personal experience. Um, the voice inside my head said, this is not the way someone who loves me should be speaking to me. Mm. So I would say, you know, that's not appropriate. Please don't do that. Please don't say this. Because remember, I met a man who was glorious. It was um, Prince Charming in all manners of speaking. And um, one of the things he did while we were dating was abdicate control. Whatever you want, whatever you want. You know, so when this happened, I'm like, oh, he's stressed out because, you know, he changed jobs. He's stressed out because we moved. Um, you know, um, all of these excuses, but he's really that loving man that I met yeah. and married. Um, so I hung on to that for a, such a long time, even though I was um just desperate um yeah. desperately um depressed mm -hmm. so um you know it's it's interesting because you know god reveals things to us as we can handle them mm -hmm. um i had three year old twins and had left a very successful career and was a stay at home mom and um so I, one of my things to get out of the house, you know, was I can finally join a Bible study. And so I spent so much more time in the Bible and I came across the scripture and I, I am not going to quote it correctly, but um, out of a man's mouth flow the contents of his heart. Yep. And that was the first time that I really said, wait a minute. I, you know, I'd had that inkling, love is patient, love is kind. Mm -hmm. um, but I said, I had been in counseling for years. Um, and I said to my counselor, I said, the man I met was not the man I married. Yeah. Um, so um, it was really significant. I, I loved him. Yeah. I didn't want to separate. I just wanted the abuse to stop. And that's very consistent. So is there a voice? The, the voice says, you know, keep working at it, forgive, submit, you know, be a good Christian wife and all of those things. Um, you know, how in the world do you apply that when, if I make the omelet wrong, yeah. it's a weekend of terror in my home. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering one counselor who, who said when you're dealing with manipulative people like this, and there's all kinds of psychological issues and things like that. Yes. But when she said, when they're, when they seem reasonable, that's how, you know, you're being manipulated. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, and I'm going to have to, and, to right. Yeah. And, and so I, I, there's something to that because that's, because I want something. Right. And so I'm doing so. And it suits my needs now to make you feel comfortable with me, which is that whole honeymoon period you were talking about. Right. Is I'll be reasonable now. Yes, I'll be reasonable. It's usually after the abuse. It's the abuse mm -hmm. that makes you. Uh, put you in the phase of anticipating what they want, what they need, um, what they don't like. And and the, the honeymoon comes after the explosion right, so right. you are doing everything you can um you know and and the truth is that uh, abusive partners have it good because all of their needs are getting met yep. um you know somebody all that matters to them it, it, right. yes yep. yes self self-centered yep. and and so now so if i if i'm if some of this conversation starts to trigger things in my mind that hey i'm i might be a victim of uh or i may be in a, an abusive relationship sorry mm -hmm. um is so what what can i what can i do do i do i go to your website do i call what would i do so um <clears throat> you have lived in a scenario of control <clears throat> So you should call Hagar sisters. We're mature Christian women. Many of us have been through experiences of abuse like I have. Um, and we are trained in the complexities of abuse. We use an empowerment model. So we'll listen um, and we will point you to God. We'll educate you. Um, It's a roll of the dice when you talk to someone, um, a church leader or even a friend at church, um, because you don't know if they're going to go to the, you know, well, you know, Jesus was long suffering. You haven't been long suffering um, or you have to forgive, submit, et, et cetera. Um, and you never really know. But. Um, people are sending the sisters books and this and that, you know, so we um, really think it's ideal for a sister to contact us first, um, where, where they'll definitely be safe and they'll be empowered to make the decisions that they want to make when they want to make them. There's no, no pressure here. We will not control any aspect of um or pass any judgment. I, if if I started telling you the things that the women have shared with us, it's horrifying. Yeah, and I know you're hypersensitive to protect those women, so that it's it's if somebody contacts you, it's not like they're going to start going getting emails from you and leaving voice messages and all. It's very sensitive to only communicating in ways where that woman will still be safe. We had a woman who was doing doctoral work in sociology and she was looking at um, the black church and domestic violence and the role of the pastors. So she joined our team and was working with us. And she said, you know, when I tell people about Hagar sisters, I tell them that they are the most anal group I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and that was in terms of safety yeah. um, because we absolutely, we won't even return a message unless they have said it's safe to leave a message. He does not have access to my phone or won't even try to get access. Um, we have built safety, 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 and confidentiality is the key um, to all of that. And as a matter of fact, our care coordinators often will bring up a situation. They won't even use the sister's name with me um so it's it's very confidential are are there some things because now i'm thinking about the people who um i have a friend who maybe 
I, I'm not sure if something's going on there and I'm concerned or a daughter or a sister, or I see this guy in their lives and I, 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 I how could I spot no so that I could say, hey, you should try calling, right? Because I'm going to guess that would be the answer. If somebody's, anybody who's suspecting it's call Hagar sisters. Um, but how would I, are there some things I can spot about the abuser early on? Are there some things I can spot from the outside in my, in a relationship that, right, I could, I could help somebody in this? Um, there are things that you might recognize, but generally um, abusive partners are known um, to be very charming, gregarious. Um, uh, we have scenarios where the woman's family rejects her for leaving him because he's such a great guy. Um, you know, and, and we've served pastor's wives, elders' wives, deacons' wives, you know, it, it's it's not something, it's a huge secret. It's a huge secret. Um, so the things that you might look for, um, and number one, they tend to um, be very um, gender focused, traditional gender roles. Um, and um, they tend to objectify women Mm -hmm. Um, it's really, um, you know, it's tough, especially to, um, identify an abusive partner because it, it reflects more in the, the, um, in the, the person who the woman is. Um, but you know, if, um, I can't, I can't even think um, because it's, it's such a secret. It's always, you know, shut up They're You know, the neighbors are going to hear you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Don't, you know, mm -hmm. why did you say that? You know? Um, so you might watch for women who constantly check, mm -hmm. you know, they might, when somebody is, they're together in a conversation and somebody asks them something, she might just subconsciously glance at her partner to see if what she's saying mm. is acceptable um, or not. Um, and really, I guess the, the key thing to do is if you suspect it is, is really build a bond and love that woman to the point where she feels like she can confide something. Absolutely. And, and um, your, your reputation proceeds. It's not just, you have to be trustworthy. Um, you have to be open-minded. You have to be non-judgmental um, as a, a person for someone to disclose to you um, because it's such a deeply held secret. Um, but once that um, disclosure has been made, you know, she will not probably not have told anyone else yeah. when she tells you. Um, so it's a huge honor. Um, there is, um, again, on our website, the empowerment wheel. Yeah. Um, and the biggest thing is keeping the confidentiality um, and pointing her to resources. You know, you don't go to the Per, the the partner abusive partner and say you know I don't like the way right. um, but being able to say you know I've noticed that you're really down um, or it seems like a long period um, that you've been down I'm I'm just concerned about you yeah. you know how are things at home how are things with you know um, mm. but again if she feels threatened. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's such a good point is don't try and fix this on your own. Most of us are not equipped to do that. And confronting is not the right answer. Helping her is the right answer in ways she's willing to be helped. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. And, and we don't give advice. Yeah. You know, yeah. the empowerment model says, if you start giving advice, there, there's, um, um, the triangle. Why can't I think of the name of it? But anyway, um, 
in no circumstance do we give advice. We might provide options. We might say, you know, somebody that I knew did such and such in this situation, but you need to make the decision of what's right for you and your children. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's great. Cause we, cause you also don't want to be the next person who controls, right? Exactly. So needs to be there. They need to own that decision is a really important point. And so Joyce, what's the website people can go to, to learn more, to support your work, to, uh, to get engaged. Yes, absolutely. Um, the website is Hagar's sisters dot org and there are two s's where that comes together yes. um and and if you have trouble spelling hagar um go to the bible h-a-g-a-r-s yeah plus the word sisters dot org and, um, and and if you're not remembering the story it's genesis 14 uh, 15 16 uh, no, genesis 16, 16 and genesis 21 okay um yes a uh, powerful story yeah yeah, and a, a great a, a great one to latch on to as the name of the organization. So Joyce, thank you for being with us, but so so much more. Thank you for your ministry in this space. I know that's it's not an easy space to minister on, but it's so critical. So thank you. It's my joy. Um, it's my joy. Thank you so much, Charles, for um, just your thoughtful questions and uh, your heart for this uh, the women who are experiencing intimate partner abuse and the men. I, I know you care about the men too. So Thanks. thank you. Thanks. And I'd also like to thank our producer, Jess Mangano and our listeners. This program is created by Vision New England, which accelerates evangelism by helping the church make disciples do justice and foster unity. So New England can be transformed through the transformation of God's people because people know Jesus. You can find more resources and donate at visionnewengland.org. This program is brought to you by the Palau Association, which is dedicated to proclaiming the good news, uniting the church and impacting cities worldwide. God bless you and thanks for listening.